How would you respond if your plans for life were derailed? If part of your identity was just stripped away? You know, this is how my college career started. Uh, my name is Austin Hiller. I'm a senior right now at Northwestern, a former member of the football team. Um, and I came to college you know, with all these visions of you know, becoming a team captain and going on to the league, doing all these great things, and you know, already had my foundation of Christ, knew why I was doing everything. Um, but I got to this new place, you know, away from friends, away from family, away from my girlfriend, um, and I just immediately started dealing with an injury that I couldn't figure out. I went to the doctor downtown maybe three or four times a week. I was up at 5 a.m. every morning there for workouts, but never got to participate with the team and eventually had to medically retire. I had two failed surgeries, and there was a lot of times where I was really testing God um, and not really trusting him. People gave me a reassurance saying, God has a plan for you. God will get you through this. God is good. But it really doesn't feel like it when you're going through the worst of it. I was reassured with a popular verse from the book of Jeremiah. comes from Jeremiah 29.11. And that's what I'll be unpacking today. So it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. In this passage, Jeremiah was trapped in the city of Jerusalem, um, which was being disassembled by the Babylonians. There were a lot of false prophets saying, don't give up. There's still hope. God's going to send us a miracle like he has in the past. But Jeremiah kept saying, there's no last minute miracle on the way. The judgment of God is falling. It's coming. Uh, and in looking at this chapter, there's a lot that we can learn about responding to negative situations. This is one of the most commonly misquoted passages in the Bible. People interpret this uh, as, okay, if, if we do what God wants us to do, if we trust him, then he'll give us exactly what we want, and he'll end our suffering. He has plans to prosper us, but it's not by our own terms. So when you aren't where you want to be, how do you respond? Are you waiting on a miracle, or are you trusting the Lord through all circumstances? You know, I think we can learn a lot from Jesus' prayer right before his crucifixion. It comes from Luke chapter 22, uh, verse 42. It says, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. I think the biggest part of that is not my will, but yours be done. Um, he's about to endure the ultimate suffering, but still he's trusting the Lord. Um, and I just really think that's something that we should try to embody in our lives when we're going through it, um, especially during these crazy times. Moving forward, when you're going through tough times, uh, I just want you to remember that we have a God who's good all the time. Rather than just praying for a change of circumstance in your life, uh, I want to challenge you to be thankful, to pray for eternal perspective, and pray that your suffering is going to be used to glorify his kingdom. Um, I want to encourage you to cling to this verse, but for the right reason. Uh, not in the false hope that God will just take away your suffering, but in the true gospel confidence that he'll give you hope and serve his kingdom in the midst of all of it. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, stay tuned because we have a lot of great messages coming up. Uh, everybody take it easy. Stay safe.